Today, we are learning the most dead simple way to make 3D text in Fusion. Here's what we're making. Shablam. Yes. That's nice, right? This is just a very simple 3D text title, nice and clean. You can use it for anything. My name's Casey. I teach content creators how to make amazing things in Fusion. I have a free video course, which is available in the description below called the Fusion Survival Guide. Let's get into making some 3D text. This is a really cool effect that you can do even in the free version of Fusion, and you don't even need to know that much about 3D. Let's back up and I'll just start with a blank white background here. This is just a background node set to four corner with kind of a white, gray, gray, and white colors, just so there's a little bit of variety in the background. And let's make our 3D text. Here in the right part of the toolbar, we have our 3D nodes. To get this to work, we're gonna need to start with a couple different nodes. The first one would be the 3D text, text 3D. And then next to it, let's grab the merge 3D, which is right next to that icon. And then finally, we'll need the renderer 3D right here. If that seems like a lot of stuff, well, it's okay. All we do is just link them up like this in order and then take the renderer 3D and we're going to drag the output of that over the output of our background one. That's going to make a merge node, just a regular old merge node. And we're pretty set up to start making our 3D text. The text 3D actually generates the text. The merge 3D is going to help us merge other things into a 3D world, like our lights and things like that. The render 3D actually renders the 3D and makes it into a 2D image that we can composite over other stuff. Okay, so let's look at our screen and we so far have a big fat nothing. That's because we need to go into our text 3D node and we need to put some text. Some text. All right, let's pick a font. I like this one lately, League Gothic. And let's pick a color that will make kind of purple, maybe purplish blue. Sure. And so far, this is not 3D at all, meaning we have failed and should quit. Okay, probably not. But we got to do a couple things to make this look 3D-ish. The first thing is that we got to go to the bottom of this inspector where it says extrusion. And we got to push up this extrusion depth. So we're going to push that up. And it kind of looks 3D, I guess. It's moving, sort of. It's pulsating in a troubling sort of way. But it's not really 3D looking. Why is that? Well, there's two reasons. One is that there's no light or shadow in this 3D environment. You can't really see the form of anything in 3D without light and shadow. So one thing we'll have to do is go over to our renderer 3D and enable lighting and shadows. And that's just great, now it's black. Well, I thought that was supposed to make it look good. Well, now we've told it that we wanna use lighting and shadows, but guess what? There's no lights in the 3D environment. So let's add a light. I'm just gonna double click off of everything, so nothing's selected, and hit Shift Spacebar, and I'll type L-I-G-H-T. And towards the top, I'm gonna to select Directional Light and hit Add. And now look what happens. Once I add this and connect it, boom, some magic is happening. So what's going on here? If I take my Merge 3D and hit one on the keyboard, I can actually look at our 3D world and hold Control and scroll to scroll out. I can hold down Alt, push down on my scroll wheel to kind of pivot around here. And we can see in this world that we have our extruded text and we have this little icon in the middle, which is a light. So let's go ahead and pull this back here. And we can see from the direction that the light is shining directly on our text. In fact, to see this a little better, we can go up here to the upper right where this little kind of gray circle is and click this little drop down. And let's go ahead and select shadows here. And that'll show us a preview of the light. Ooh, and it's kind of tweaking out a little bit for me. We'll just go on to lights. And now we can see that this light is shining directly on our text, which gives us this kind of ugly glare. So just like real lighting, if we were to adjust the lighting, that's going to mess with the glare as well as where the shadows are and everything. So let's select directional light. And I'll go up here to transform and let's just adjust the X rotation. That's the rotation of kind of up and down. And I'll just kind of put this down like negative 30-ish, 40-ish, something like that. And now we don't have that glare in our render anymore. We can see the form of the extruded text a little better. Oh, looking much nicer. So really, if that's good enough, you can stop there. All you really need is the text 3D, the directional light, and to turn on your lighting. But if we wanna make this a little bit nicer, we can go back to text 3D and we can scroll down to extrusion and we can play with some of these extrusion controls. I like to play with bevel depth and bevel width. You can push those up both just a little bit. And this adds like a little bevel to the edges. I'll push this up so it's a little easier to see. And now we have this nice kind of bevel around the edges. That always looks a little bit nicer. I'll maybe push the tracking out a little bit just so we can split those apart. And I think maybe this width is just a little much. So we'll take this down, but it kind of rounds out 
that text, makes it look a little nicer. And now we have our classy text. The other thing I might do is add an ambient light. So I'll double click off of this, shift spacebar, AMB. That's gonna bring up our ambient light and I'll hit add. And then to add that to the 3D world, I'll just take the output and push it into the merge 3D like that. And that'll add just a little bit of extra light so that our shadows aren't totally black. It's always nice to have your shadows just a little bit lifted, especially with kind of 3D renders and stuff. Makes it a little bit more believable that we're in this kind of white room. We get a little bit of reflection there, boost this up as much as we want and get some really cool effects, you know, a little bit more uh, kind of subtle pastel look, or we can take this all the way down, kind of dial that in. Very cool. The other thing we can do is animate this. And a simple way to animate this would just be to select the text 3D and go over to its transform controls. And you can keyframe any of these controls. So let's say at, you know, 20 frames, we'll have this text be right where it is, both on the rotation and the translation. And then at frame zero, we'll maybe push this back into space and rotate it a little bit like that. And now whooshing, we have that kind of fly in. That's really cool. And we can adjust our animation with the spline panel. In the upper right, if I click on spline, that's gonna open up my spline panel here. Anything that I check, we'll be able to see the motion graph of here. And I can just box select these last keyframes and hit F on the keyboard to flatten out that graph. And that'll let this kind of smooth out, slow down before it comes to a stop, which always looks nicer when it comes to animation. There we have our animated text. So if you're looking for a quick way to make 3D text, that is a great way to do it inside of Fusion. Again, if you're just getting into Fusion, make sure to check out the Fusion Survival Guide in the description down below. Hey, thanks for hanging out with me. I hope that your text is well extruded and that your ambient light is appropriate. <laughs> uh, that's truly my hope for you.